Now, in the first part of this tutorial, I was looking at 1 and 3 watt LEDs, these little single individual bead LEDs. In the second part, I'm going to be looking at these. These are cob LEDs, chip on board, and they're matrices. You can see, if I get in close, this one is a 2x2 two two matrix. This one is a 3x3 three three matrix. This one on the left is a 5 watt. This one here is a 10 watt. And there are also these disc LEDs, which are used in circular lights. Um, I think they are 9 watts at the top, and the other two are 3 watts and 5 watts. So we'll look at driving them, what voltages you need, what currents you need, and we're going to talk more this time about heat sinks, because all of these high power LEDs generate a fair bit of heat, and if you're going to run them at full power for any length of time, you need a heat sink. The one thing we're not going to look at in this part two is resistors. On these high power LEDs, uh, using resistors to limit current is impractical, we're not going to attempt it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is test these LEDs. And in the same way that you can put a little bead LED, 3 volt LED, on a 3 volt coin cell and light it up, you can also do the same with a 10 watt LED. Now this 10 watt LED has a matrix of LEDs and it's 3 by 3. So there are 3 rows three columns. So it means that in the same way that I built this matrix of LEDs here, the uh, voltage required to drive this is going to be at least 9 volts. So the best way to test this 10 watt LED is with a 9 volt battery. So you can see that if I push the 9 volt battery onto the uh, connections of the LED, it lights up. Now the reason this works and doesn't um, damage the LED without any current limiting is because those LEDs at full power require 3.3 volts. So three of them in series require 9.9 .9 volts and they're only getting 9.0 volts. So this thing is being driven a lot below full power and it's fine, it runs without um, a current limiting resistor or a current, current limiting uh, regulator. You do have to be a little bit careful though. This 10 watt LED has the same matrix of 9 uh, LEDs inside, but they're wired differently. They're not wired in a 3x3 three three matrix. They're actually wired in a continuous series line. The, the connections go down one column, back up the other, and then down the third one. So there are nine LEDs all in series. So this thing needs about 27 volts to light up. And you can see that on a 9 volt battery, nothing happens. Now this 5 watt LED has a matrix of 2x2, two two, and therefore we need 6 volts to test this. And so what I've done is I've just put four AA alkalines, 1.5 volts each, and put them straight across it, and it lights up. It's not very bright, um, but it's just a, a check to make sure it's working. So I've just come inside because I can't remember what um, current the 5 watt LED requires. So if we look in this table, forward current, 700 milliamps. So, let's go ahead and drive the 5 watt LED at uh, full brightness. So what I've done is I've uh, bolted it down onto the heatsink um, because at full brightness it's going to get quite warm and I've fitted the uh, driver regulator board. Now this is slightly different to the ones I used last time. They were general purpose voltage and current uh, regulators. This one is uh, designed for LEDs. You can see that the output connector there says LED minus and LED plus. Um, and the, there are no potentiometers on here. The only control there is, is this bank of uh, jumpers. And uh, that's for setting the current. The voltage, you don't set, it just rises up to whatever is needed. So you can see that I fitted the 600 milliamp jumper on the right there, and the 150 milliamp jumper. That will give 750 milliamps. Now this thing said maximum 700 milliamps, but uh, I'm sure it'll be fine on 750. And once again, I'm going to be driving it from a 12 volt lead acid battery. So let's hook it up and uh, see how we go. So power is connected through the regulator and there's the LED running at full brightness. And now here's the 10 watt LED bolted down onto the heatsink to make sure we uh, don't overheat it connected up to the LED driver board. I've relinked it because I just checked on an eBay listing for a 10 watt LED and it said 8 to 900 milliamps so I'm going for 900. I've put in the 600 and the 300 milliamp links 
and uh, so let's connect it up. And there's the 10 watt LED running flat out. Now something's just occurred to me, um, 900 milliamps seems a bit low because uh, I was assuming these LEDs were 3.3 volts each and there's three of them, that's 9.9 .9 volts, so let's call it 10. That should be driven at about one amp, a thousand milliamps. So it looks to me like probably what's happening here is the LEDs at full power aren't running at 3.3 volts, they're running ever so slightly more than that. So let's put this uh, digital voltmeter across the LEDs and see what the voltage is. Right, well now it's almost impossible to see the uh, reading on there, but it actually says, <coughs> has it changed? 10.6, I think it is. Yeah, 10.6 volts. So let's divide 10.6 by 3. And we've got 3.53 volts. So the individual LEDs are running at a voltage a bit higher than I thought. Not 3.3 volts, but 3.5 volts each. Now, finally, I couldn't resist um, powering up this Cobb disc LED, but I've no memory of what the uh, current rating is. So, let's have a look. There are clearly six LEDs on there, but they could be wired in different configurations. 2x3, two 3x2, three, three or they could all six be in series, but that would take quite a high voltage. So let's assume that for the moment they're wired two in series in three columns and uh, we can find out whether that's the case by putting six volts on this thing. So I tried it on six volts and nothing happened but look at this on nine volts it's lit up quite nicely. So I'm assuming that these are in two columns of three LEDs per column requiring nine volts or at full power about 10 volts to light this thing up. So let's put 10 volts across it. It's three watts. I'm gonna to have to use the calculator. Right, well I should have been able to work that out, but um, for three watts at 10 volts, we need uh, 0.3 of an amp, that's 300 milliamps. So here's the three watt LED bolted down to the heat sink. Uh, connected to the regulator board. I fitted just the 300 milliamp link so let's connect up the battery connections and see what we get. And there it is, the 3 watt disc Cobb LED lit up at the proper current 300 milliamps for 3 watts. Well now in part 3 of this tutorial I'm going to be moving on to the much bigger LEDs. This is a 20 watt, here's a 50 watt and the big one, a 100 watt LED. And we may even need to be talking about fan cooling for this one.